Hi, my name is Paul and I am the lead research technician at the How to Linux Research Labs and I'm also the administrator of the Pop! OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. Today's video I'm going to show you how to install OBS Studio on Pop! OS Linux 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's my, um, here's my Pop! installation here. And here's my NeoFetch, so you can actually see that I'm actually in a POP session here. And I'm going to install OBS Studio on POP 22.04. Okay. So, um, let me just show you that I don't already have it installed. And when we're done, it'll be installed. So we can, you know, see that the, the installation process actually worked. And it wasn't already on here to begin with. Okay, so... I'm going to cycle through some of these folders here. Utilities, as you can see, nothing there. OBS, Studio, System, nothing there. Office is usually just library office stuff. In library home is probably where, where it would be, or where, where it will be, once we install it. And as you can see, there's no OBS Studio here. It would be in the, in the O's, right? So it would be somewhere about it right in here. Okay, so it's not installed. So once it's installed, we'll come back and verify that it was installed in the applications and we'll try to launch it via GUI and command line uh, methods. Okay, so uh, I think that's pretty much about it for some of the groundwork there, some of the housekeeping things, the preliminaries and whatnot. And we're ready to get into the meat of the matter here. Okay, so we're going to open up the uh, browser and go to the OBS uh, Studio homepage. And uh, it gives you a little uh, Quick little uh, description of what it is here. Free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. Okay, whether it does um, video uh, editing, I'm not sure. I've I've, I've seen kind of conflicting um, answers to that. It doesn't seem like it does it out of the box, but maybe you can do video video editing with some plugins or some extensions or whatnot. I'm not I'm not quite sure. I'd have to go through all the documentation. Okay, so anyway, we're going to install uh, OBS Studio, and the latest release looks like it's 30.0.2, released uh, December 11th of last year, 2023. Okay, so it's a couple of couple of months behind, but it's still pretty pretty current. Okay, so then um, off this page, you don't really need to scroll down for anything here. Just there's more information and whatnot. I'm just going to focus on the um, the different platforms here. Obviously, we're going to skip Windows and Mac, and I'm going to go to Linux here. Let's see what pops up here. It says supports 10 and 11, and Mac, you know, whatever versions. Okay. Linux, you get a little thing down in the left-hand corner there. Okay, download. Anyway, so whatever. We're okay. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Linux here, and that brings you to this page here. And about, out of all the, the, the main methods of installation... On, on of installing programs on Linux, flat snaps and whatnot. There doesn't seem to be any snap snaps. I don't see app image. I'm not going to do compiling from source. There is a flat pack, so you can do it uh, via via a, a, a flat pack package. Won't do that this time. And then um, don't want to. I don't want to use the pop shop or or the pop repos in the terminal because uh, two reasons um, it's just too easy to really it's just too easy to, to install it through pop shop you click install and it installs it for you there's no real challenge there and, and in the command line you're going to use sudo apt install obs or whatever and that's just too easy as well so it's not only not, not much of a challenge there's no real technical aspect to it but they're also probably going to be a, a tick or two behind, possibly. I'm not saying they are, but they they could not they could very well not be the the version that's current right now, which is 32 30.0.2. So they might lag behind a couple of ticks. Okay, so um, so yeah, there's like what six different ways of doing it. I'm going to four or like five or five ways of not doing it. I'm not going to do you know, uh, Pop Shop, CLI, Snap, 
flat or compiling. That's like what five like, or app image. Like there's like six in there. I'm not gonna do. And I don't see a standalone dev file here. So the only uh, other option left is what is what I'm gonna do. It's a little bit more technical. Not much, but there's a little bit more to it. You can dig a little bit deeper into your uh, Linux inner workings by doing it this way. And so I'm going to scroll up here real quick. Okay, we're on the uh, Linux here since that's highlighted in blue. And then there's some information here about how it's available as a flat pack on Flathub. And I'm going to I'm going to forego that. This doesn't really give you anything here. I would I I look there. You don't need to do that. You should always ha uh, set up flat pack anyway in case you do want to you know install flat packs. So. I'm going to focus on this other way here, which is I'm going to add the PPA URL to our to our sources list. It, it does say for Ubuntu, but I'm I'm pretty sure that it'll it'll work on Pop as well. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to focus on what's going on here. These three lines here, and uh, you know, you say what what makes me think it's going to work on Pop? Well, I mean, you know, these are going to these commands are all going to work on on Pop, right? sudo add apt re repository and then the PPA itself which is going to be added to our sources list and then we're going to use uh, apt update and apt to install so everything should work here on pop even though it says it's for Ubuntu okay so we're going to go with these three lines here now before we do that let's check uh... let's check out let's pop open pop shop and look in the uh, the GUI repo manager here so this hash uh, this kind of a hamburger menu up here pop that open go to this third option here so uh, system software sources this is our repo manager and I want to focus on extra sources here okay what do we have here one two three four five five entries so when we're done there'll be a sixth at least at least one more uh, relating to OBS studio so then when we run apt update and apt upgrade commands in the terminal it'll check that repo URL and it'll pull in any new uh, you know patches updates versions and whatnot okay so we'll come back and check that when we're done you can also use your uh, file manager GUI file, man GUI file manager here uh, the Nautilus uh, file manager and or uh, CD into that um, file wherever you know I don't want to get into the path right now we can CD in and do a cat command and or uh, open the contents in nano and check and you can uh, check and edit your repo URLs in your APT sources list these two ways here but I'm just going to deal with um, the, the repo uh, repo manager here via pop shop okay so I think we're all squared up and ready to go now so I guess um, what we'll do here first is just copy this first line here, copy that, and then we'll go to our terminal here, and we'll clear on that, and just a, a series of three copy and paste operations is basically all it's going to entail to get this going here. Okay, so we're going to paste that in there take a look at it real quick make sure the syntax is correct uh, sudo add apt repository PPA uh, personal package archive OBS project this is going to be kind of infl it doesn't look like a traditional URL or URI but it, I'm not sure how to describe it but it's like a stub version but once this kind of expands out and inflates and when, once you see it in the repo manager or in your sources list um, it'll look like a like a you know the traditional recognizable a uh, URI URL that you would expect to see. Okay, so OBS project OBS Studio. Okay, good. So once you have that copied in, copied and pasted in, go ahead and, and give it the once over, and then um, hit enter on that, and it's going to go ahead and enter. It's going to go ahead and add that uh, URL to our sources list. Now it is going to have me do some interactive stuff here. So let's take a quick little look here. Okay, everything looks pretty good. Basic stuff here. 
Just kind of telling me what it's going to do and do I want to go forward. Yes. Enter to continue. And as you can see the output there, it's going to add, um, you know, it's going to add that URL to our sources list. And then I think it's even going to be right here. It's already done it right here. You can just kind of scroll down here with your mouse and take a look. Yeah, you see right there? That, and there's a couple. I'd have to go into a little bit more research to, to you know, familiarize myself again with, with the different... Um, different uh, ver the different uh, iterations or whatever of what we just added as far as the, the OBS Studio uh, URL but yeah it, it's here and we can go ahead and use APT to install from here now at this point APT doesn't know about this URL so our next step is going to actually make uh, APT aware that this um, PPA URL has been added to the sources list and that it can pull from it okay so we'll clear on that and at this point, real quick, a little quick diversion real quick, so I don't forget, go back to the um, repo manager here. And without having to do any kind of refreshing or whatnot, it just kind of adds it on the fly. You can start at the top here, kind of arrow down. Remember we had two, three, three, four, five, we had five, now we got, you know, there's six. So what's new? Okay, this one right in the middle is new right here. This is, this is added on the fly. OBS project, OBS studio, okay good. And you can also highlight something and you can delete, you can add new ones manually and you can um, edit the ones that exist. You could um, change some of these things. I, I, I guess you probably wouldn't want to change too many. You just get, you just basically you're getting information here. And the main thing you can do here is just to uh, um, disable it without actually removing it in case you want to come back to it later. So we're going to keep it enabled and that's good. Okay. Go ahead and uh, minimize everything there. Go back to the browser. Okay. First line is done. Second line, sudo apt update. Now this is the this command is going to let apt know about that uh, repo URL so it could use it. At this point it doesn't know that it exists. So if you used apt to install OBS Studio, it would fall off or crash or whatever, but it just probably would not work. So you have to do this next step here to make uh, APT um, aware of it. So copy that, paste it in. Okay, take a look at it real quick. Pseudo APT update. Okay, good. You don't need to do upgrade at this point. Just just update. You're gonna update the cache or uh, I forgot what what the, what the other term was. APT's uh, store or whatever. I forgot the exact term. I don't know if cache is quite right, but you get the idea. It's gonna it's going to update uh, APT's knowledge that this um, new URL exists, okay? So enter on that, and we'll see what happens here. Okay, so now this right here, this, uh, line, up, this line 9 here, which pertains to the OBS Studio uh, URL, okay, now it knows that this exists, okay? Before it didn't know that, now, now it should be aware of it. Okay, everything looks good there. Go ahead and clear on that. And actually, I can use Alt-Tab to go back. Okay. And then the last line here, let's go ahead and copy, copy that. Okay. And then go back to the terminal here. So we copied that last one. Copy and paste. Okay, let's take a look at it. Now we're going to use APT to install... OBS Studio. I'm not sure if FFmpeg is coming from that URL or if that's going to just be um, added as um, as a dependency separately. Certainly OBS Studio package here is going to give us OBS Studio. Okay, so we're all squared up here and this should install OBS Studio and let's see what happens. Okay, so once we've got that all copied and pasted into the terminal prompt there, go ahead and enter on that. And it's, it is going to prompt me, okay? So it does prompt me. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. So it says here, the following additional packages will be installed. Um, I, I think these are all just basically uh, dependencies, so that's good. And then these are uh, optional, which I'm going to forego at this point. And it's going to tell you that it's going to install these new packages here. Dependencies, okay? And uh, 55... 55 newly installed dependencies, looks like, 
55. Okay, and it's going to use up uh, 440 megabytes. Okay, that's fine. I got that covered. Do I want to continue? Um, yes, no. I want to go yes. Since the, the Y is capitalized, that means that's the default. So I don't have to type in Y or Y. I could just hit enter and it'll be yes. That's the default. The big, the, 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 ca the character which is capitalized is the default. Okay, so enter on that, and it's going to download and install OBS Studio. And it looks like it's going okay here, and back when it's done. Okay, that took a couple of minutes, but it looks like everything uh, downloaded was unpacked properly and installed, and everything looks good, nothing... Uh, no errors, no crashes, no faults, everything looks good, okay? So we, we can clear on that. And OBS Studio should be installed at this point. Okay, we're done with um, their, their, uh, their website there. So, a couple more things, and, and that'll be it. Two main things now. We got, the we, got, we got it installed, now we have to launch it. Now we can launch it two, two different ways. You can launch it via... GUI method, which is what we're going to do right now. Take a look here. Okay, we're in the library home here. Here's OBS Studio. Remember that was number four? It is here now. So we can either launch it from here or you can right click and pin the dash. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just try that. Let's pin the dash. Then we can bug out of there. And then here it is on the dash. Okay. On, on, actually, um. This is the dock, actually. This is the dock, I do believe. So it's been pinned to the dock. Okay, so the GUI method and the command line. Okay, let's first see if this works here. Okay, you don't have to, nothing on the right click, so we're going to left click on this and, and, um, and launch it. Okay, on mine it's not going to work because I don't have the proper hardware. But if I did have the proper hardware, it would, it would, um, I only have, on, on this um, ThinkPad, I only have an iGPU. So, um, you know, it doesn't have a discrete card. So it's not going to work. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was not anticipating this. But this does not necessarily mean that I didn't install it properly. It installed properly. It's just that I don't have the hardware for it to open with. Okay, so. Other than that, this still would, this method of opening it, of launching it, would still apply. Okay, so the second, um, the second way of install of uh, launching it would be uh, from the command line. So let's see what happens here. I gotta find the um, the keyword to command. Well, let's just let's just try the obvious one here. OBS Studio, right? Looks like there might be two S's there. Let's try two S's. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pause it and take a look. I should have looked it up before. Let me pause it real quick and then uh, look up the, the, the command line uh, keyword to launch it from the terminal. Okay, after a little quick bit of research, I did find that the... Um, the command is not OBS Studio or OBS Dash Studio, but just regular OBS. Now, this this works, although I'm going to get the I, I'm going to get the same error, the the same initialization error I got before because I don't have the proper hardware. But this is this is the right keyword here, and by virtue of it having um launched right from the get go means that the OBS binary, the OBS Studio binary has already automatically been added that path has already been um, added to the uh, the system path environmental variable so it's on the path already I didn't have to add the OBS studio binary path to the path variable manually it was already done okay so it's on the path and you can launch it from the terminal which to me is plan plan B plan A should always be the GUI it's just more easy but if you have problems launching from the GUI, or, or uh, once it launches and you have usage problems in the GUI, 
then you know you're kind of stuck. But if you launch it from the terminal, then you can see launch errors and and um, usage errors in in the the OBS Studio program itself. So if things are faulting or crashing, the, you know on the launch or on the usage, you can come to the running process in the terminal, and hopefully there'll be some kind of output output that can help you debug launch and or use um, crashes and faults and whatnot. So uh, GUI is plan plan A and command line is plan B. Okay, so in another uh, kind of a downside, I guess, to the, the the command line launch method is that you have to keep the terminal, you have to dedicate a terminal window and at least one tab to the running process, and it, you know, it's going to kind of, it can clutter up things possibly if you have a lot of windows and tabs open, but you're going to have to have one dedicated, uh, you know, window and tab to the OBS process. So it can clutter, clutter things up a little bit. That's why I say it's plan B, but certainly it's a great way of, um, uh, you know, to trying to debug any, any problems. Okay. And, and one more thing to keep in mind is that whatever's running in the, in the, in the terminal is reliant on the front end. So if you kill the front end, this will free up the, this will free up, this will kill this process here in the terminal. And if you can like control Z, the back end, you know, the process in the terminal, the the front end will go away or freeze or whatever. So they need they need each other. They work together, uh, you know, in, in tandem together. Okay. So anyway, so OBS is the command. So enter on that. Okay, that's what I got before. And I'm, I'm I'm getting it now. I don't have the the hardware to support it. Okay, but that means that it's on the path, and that it, normally it should it should work this way. So we'll okay on that, and then um, kind of scroll up. Yeah, see this is this means it's on the path, and that it was actually trying to launch it. And like I said, I just don't have the proper hardware at this point. I will in the future, hopefully someday soon. Okay. So I don't have the, the proper hardware for OBS Studio to launch properly, but this would have worked otherwise. Okay, so that's that's that. So we'll clear on that, and we'll go back to the NeoFet screen here as we close the video out. Okay, okay. So that was how to install OBS Studio. Uh, what was it 30 on Pop OS Linux 22.04? Okay. That's the end of the video, and um, once again, my name is Paul, and I am the lead the lead research technician here at the uh, How to Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the administrator of the uh, Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. And until my next video, happy Linuxing.